Hey everyone, Ken here, back with a new video for you. As you can see, I have some new digs. I just moved, so you're gonna get a little change of scenery in the upcoming videos here. For this video, I am focusing on data science projects. So what projects should you do to learn data science the fastest? Also, what projects should you do to set yourself up and give you the most career opportunities as possible? to really catch the eye of recruiters or anyone that's interviewing you or looking at your resume. As usual, please hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you wanna see more videos similar to it, please hit that subscribe button. This video comes in three parts. So the first I'm talking about some of the things that I think each data science project should have. The second section I'm gonna talk about the individual types of projects that I think you should work on for learning and to set yourself up for success in the job market. And the last part, I'm gonna talk about a couple of the things that I think really set you apart from other potential data science candidates. So for data science projects, all of them should have some element of data collection. That's the first thing. So you're either pulling in data from an existing data source like Kaggle, you're scraping it, you're finding some of this from a website or, or, or from some other online resource, or you're collecting it yourself. Those are some of the really fun ones where you, you collect your own data and actually get to analyze it. Another thing that all these projects should have is a descriptive analysis looking at data exploration and also having some element of data cleaning. So the descriptive statistics inform your decisions about what you're actually going to be building your models on. So if you see correlation between two, two different variables, that's a really good starting place to be able to see if there's some predictive power there. For data cleaning, I also think that that's really important because you have to understand and do a lot of decision making around what you actually do with null values. So should you make all of the null values equal to the average for the column, or should you just remove that column if it has a certain null threshold? These types of decisions can really have a large impact on your analysis. So I really like to see people spend a decent amount of time in these specific areas. In addition to that, feature engineering is also particularly important. So taking your data and grouping it or evaluating it in a different way, pulling in different data sources and making them relevant to your analysis, I think is, is really, really important because as hopefully you'll soon learn, data science is as mu much about what goes into the model as the actual model selection and the things that you choose. So getting the right data, creating your own data and creating new data from the existing data that you have is a really, really important skill to learn. All right, now moving on to the types of projects that I think that you should work on. So the first project I really recommend is doing a multiple linear regression or a logistic regression. So these are both linear models. They're relatively easy under, to understand from a data science perspective, but they're also very easy to explain in a business context. I think that understanding a model and then being able to explain it to someone else is extremely important. And these models are easy to explain in the business context because, again, they are linear. That means that the feature importance is directly relatable to the outcome variable. So let's say, uh, if I'm using a basketball example, if someone makes more three-pointers, you can directly see how that is related to the score. So I really appreciate this type of analysis. It's fundamentally fairly simple and it's a great analysis and algorithms to actually build on. The second type of analysis that I'd really have you focus on is some form of classification problem. So sticking with that basketball analogy, can we uh, predict if a team will be a playoff contender or not over the course of the season? Now, that's something that is a binary classifier. You can also do a you know, categorical classifier where you're classifying multiple different things, but a binary classifier is generally a better problem to start with. What I like to do is compare a bunch of the different types 
of algorithms for a classification and determine which one is the best and which one is the best for our specific evaluation criteria. So make sure you're familiar with accuracy, precision, recall, and any of the other evaluation criteria that you have because each individual problem has a specific outcome that is more beneficial. In these types of analysis, I usually compare the naive Bayes, a logistic regression, k-nearest neighbor, a decision tree, a random forest, and a support vector machine model to see which one has the best outcome for my specific problem. Usually random forest or uh, a gradient boosted random forest will have the best results, especially if there's large data. But if there is a more simple model that can produce the similar or as good results, you almost always want to use that. The next type of analysis is very similar to the previous one. We're going to be looking at a regression problem where you're using a bunch of different types of models and determining which one has the best outcome. So again, the evaluation criteria is important. So understand ROC, AUC, log loss, any of those metrics that you're evaluating it by, and also understand the different models you're using. So I recommend using a multiple linear regression, looking at some um, you know, exponential curves in that as well. Also a random forest support vector regression, ridge or lasso regression depending on if you have sparse data or not. And so using all of these different types of algorithms on the same problem really helps you to understand what they're good for and to be able to compare them to know when to use them where. Notice that in the first three projects I actually didn't mention any deep learning at all. I think you should do one project specifically focused on deep learning and compare that to a random forest or a gradient boosted random forest. These projects usually have more data and that's where deep learning in my opinion creates the most value is in a really rich data set. So I would focus one project specifically on answering a deep learning problem, be it uh, image recognition or some sort of computer vision problem or even just the, uh, the numbers data set that you can find on Kaggle. I think that deep learning has a ton of applications and it really deserves its, its own type of project. It takes some time to get used to TensorFlow or Keras or uh, PyTorch or any of the ones that are out there. So make sure that you take the time and really focus on understanding this area. The next type of project that I would really focus on is learning a time series analysis technique especially if you're interested in finance or any fields that use time series data consistently, this is something that creates a lot of value. So you can look at rolling averages, you can look at ARIMA, you can look at some sort of other type of rolling regression model, and that will get you a good understanding of how data works over time because that is fundamentally different than how a lot of your other data sets are gonna work. You can also look at using a, a recurrent neural net. I've done a project on that, you can see that above, um, and compare that to how some of these other techniques work. I think that that is a good benchmark, especially for a specific uh, career interest group. The last type of project that I would really recommend is a clustering project. So you can either use a k-means, a k-modes, or a hierarchical clustering algorithm to group uh, data points together. So all of the previous projects have been supervised learning. Clustering is unsupervised learning. So we don't have a dependent variable. We don't have a variable that we're trying to predict. We are just trying to split the rows that we currently have into groups based on how similar they are to each other. So this can be used to create features in your data set and feed them into your model. So let's say I want to understand my customers better. I can use a clustering algorithm to see which customers are most similar to each other and then I can sit, put what type of customer they are into my model to see if it predicts how they, if, if or how they perform some type of behavior. Again, these are really useful and it's a great type of algorithm to have in your toolkit. 
Okay, so now for the fun part. What can actually set you apart on some of these projects? So the first thing that, that really impresses me is when someone goes out and collects their own data. So they either scrape it in or they keep their data themselves. It takes a lot more of an engineering effort. It shows that someone is willing to work relatively hard on a project if they can go out and build a scraper or find a interesting way to collect this data. It also is more representative of the real world. The second thing that is really impressive to me is when you do very advanced feature engineering. So, the, so an example of that would be doing a, a cluster analysis that you feed in as a variable. You can also use principal component analysis or factor analysis to reduce the size of your data set. Um, and you can, you can get some pretty cool insights from that as well. So using one of those and doing your due diligence in understanding your specific features. You know, for example, I saw an analysis recently where someone created a feature uh, based on distance from a location. So rather than just having like where these people lived, they used GeoPandas and took how far each person was specifically away from uh, an important point. So that would be going one step further in the feature engineering and it really created a ton of lift in the analysis. So I would definitely pay mind to how you can think about the, that component differently. Another thing with these projects that really sets someone else aside is if they productionize it. So if they put a flask wrapper on this and make it available through their website, for example, uh, which makes it interactive and usable, I really, um, I'm not blown away, but I'm, I'm very impressed by going that extra step. That shows that's something that you're doing in the workforce, and that shows that someone can see the project from the beginning to the end. So if, I, if someone threw a project at me where they scraped their own data and had, um, had to go through and clean it and do all that stuff to it, they created some new features, they used a couple different models to figure out which was the best one, and then they put it on their website and you know, like on a small flask wrapper or something like that, that would be something that would really catch my attention. Hopefully this video is helpful and it gives you a good idea about where to really uh, go direction wise with data science projects. I'd love to get any feedback about your thoughts on this. You know, I'd love to hear about some of the projects that you've done in the comment section below. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.